Hi, welcome to Consider the Truth. Today I have a special guest with me, Marco Guerrero, and I'll turn it over to him for a second just to introduce himself. Hi, uh, my name is Marco Guerrero. I am I live in California. Been a long member uh, since 2012. I uh, just wanted to have this meeting with uh, Scott, and uh, just I don't know. I I think. I, we've been discussing about the last days on, on my YouTube channel um, with comments here and there. And I just kind of, uh, I'm happy that you uh, wanted to uh, have this meeting with me. It, I know it's been a while for me to interact with others. Well, yeah, I've been but... following your channel for a long time. You've been around the space for forever. I really like your style. I like, you're just really laid back and I like how you just kind of take different thoughts and just kind of think about what other people are saying. And I also like that, um, you know, a lot of times come out and say, this is the way it's going to be guys. So be prepared for this. It's like a lot of, wow, this is really interesting. Maybe it is like this and, but it could be other ways as well. And I, I kind of like how, um, because I think there is some degree of uncertainty about what might happen. So I kind of like, how you're you're open-minded to different possibilities um so today and maybe you disagree with that <laughs> i don't know that's that's the impression i get when i watch your channel anyway um yeah i, I think no no i you're 100 right i am like that I, i'm very open-minded i like to hear people out i the the thing about me is that I hear people out, not even others that are not from my religion, mm -hmm. because I'm very open minded. I, I take truths from them and whatever I feel like it's not right. I just, you know, toss it to the side. Yeah. But again, yeah, I'm very I'm very open minded and, and like to hear other people discuss what they think uh, regarding doctrine or just life in general, how the right. way, they, you know, how to prepare and things like that. And, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very open-minded. Yeah. Well, good. So I wanted to share, I've been doing this video series. The last couple of videos have, have been about the destruction of the Gentiles, how the United States government will eventually collapse and there's going to be the wrath of God, which Elder Christofferson describes as basically natural occurrences that happen when people reject God and kind of, turn things on ourselves. And so the next segment in that is about how the wrath begins with the saints. And so I wanted to read just a page from my the next part of my presentation. And then we could kind of go through what you think about it. And um, let's see, control to select to desktop. Let's try that. Let me know if you can see my desktop. Oh boy, maybe maybe it's not working. Can you see my screen now? No, yeah, I can see it. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so I just have a few quotes here. I'll read this, and then we'll we'll kind of go through each one, I guess, or I'll read a couple, and then we could go through it and kind of get your feel for what you think about these things. So, scriptures say that the wrath begins with the saints in Doctrine and Covenants, section one twelve. It says, "Behold." Vengeance cometh speedily upon the inhabitants of the earth, a day of wrath, a day of burning, a day of desolation, of weeping, of mourning, and of lamentation. And as a whirlwind, it shall come upon all the face of the earth, saith the Lord. And upon my house shall it begin, and from my house shall it go forth, saith the Lord. First among those among you, saith the Lord, who have professed to know my name and have not known me and have blasphemed against me in the midst of my house, saith the Lord. And then I'll read this one too, and then we'll we'll take a pause and kind of talk about that. It says in 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, 
where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So I guess, what do you think about that? How it's going to begin? It says at the house, at, at his house. Um, so where does that put you and me? And, and what do you think about that? Well, I, I, it, it's, it says that it, 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 upon his house, they will begin. So um, it's the church. It's um, not necessarily, uh, I'm, I don't want to say the, the organization. I'm, I, what I mean as a church is uh, as individuals, it's, it's the, the judgment is going to begin with us. And I, I personally think it already has uh, and it'd, not, be, it'd be among the the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints rather than yeah. like the jews for example you think right i think it's it's also interesting how it says first among those who have professed to know my name and have not known me they've blasphemed against me in the house in the midst of my house and so i think it's there's even a subsection of the church of we know there's going to be a, a division of the wheat and the tares. And I think that might be alluding to some of that as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. The I have a question. What do you think? Do you think that the tares, do, do, do they know that they're tares? Probably not. Some do. Yeah, that's, some do, but yeah. I think there's some. I think there's a lot of people that like right before we joined we, i hit the record button we're talking about different forums we go on and um different different groups that are out there and i think there's there's people that i think they have very good intentions that have left the church they say this is this is not for me president nelson is not taking us in the right direction and they feel like they need to warn faithful members about what they see and I think they have they have good intentions, I think. Some of them, I, I don't think that they're trying to pull people away from the church because they feel like they're doing the work of the devil. They're, they feel like they're doing what they, they're, they're preaching what they believe. Um, so I think they're wrong. And I think those types of people would probably be a little bit blindsided when, when the division comes between the wheat and the tares. Also, I think there's yeah, I, a I lot of people too. that think that they're tares and they're not. There's there's people that oh yeah, you know, they're so hard on themselves and and we all have our weaknesses and um some of those are harder to kick than others and people fall back on their on their sins and they repent and fall back and they feel terrible about it and I don't think it's my place to say where they're at. I think they're doing the best they can. I think you're on the dot on that one because sometimes I feel that way. And it's not because I'm doing things that are not right in the eyes of God. It's more like not doing enough. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes I feel like, oh, I could have done more. I could have done this. or why did I not uh, go to the temple uh, this day? And why did I, you know, things like that. And I think I beat myself up a lot because of that, because I, I feel like I don't do enough. Because believe me, when I first joined a church, I I mean, people, people thought I was a missionary or something like that. <laughs> I, I was so, so dedicated, so active with the missionaries. Mm-hmm. But when I moved down here and the kids gotten older and I'm more focused on the family that, you know, because I, I want to protect them and, and and keep them safe and provide for them. And and so it kind of, I don't know, things are different now. And, and, and I beat myself up because of that. Yeah, something that's been coming to my mind more is um, when we go to the temple and it, it talks about how we, and also in the doctrine and covenants, it says how we shouldn't be light-minded and that's the world we live in. Everything's light-minded. Not only do we make light of everything, but we're just like, 
wasting our time doing stuff that really has no purpose a lot of times. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'll, I'll keep going here. We'll read the next little bit. Joseph Smith said, though the Lord promises protection to the righteous in the last days, the prophet Joseph Smith clarified that, oh, and this is from an Institute manual. Um, I think anyway, it says, Joseph Smith clarified that some who are righteous may lose their lives in the trials and calamities of the last days. Quote, I explained concerning the coming of the Son of Man also that it is a false idea that the saints will escape all the judgments, whilst the wicked suffer, for all flesh is subject to suffer, and the righteous shall hardly escape. Still, many of the saints will escape, for the just shall live by peace. Yet many of the righteous will fall a prey to disease, to pestilence, etc., by reason of the weakness of the flesh, and yet be saved in the kingdom of God. And then it says in the Institute Manual, when you read about Revelation 14, 13, it says, The dead which die in the Lord. John heard a voice saying, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. This suggests to that although the Lord's people generally will be protected from many of the judgments to come, some righteous individuals will die in the calamities and tribulations of the last days. Nevertheless, to those who are righteous, death is associated with peace and joy. They rest from their labors and their works do follow them. DNC 64 verse 34, or 63 verse 34 says, And the saints also shall hardly escape. Nevertheless, I, the Lord, am with them and will come down in heaven from the presence of my father and consume the wicked with unquenchable fire. And um, so I guess, I guess I'll pause it right there. And I think that's really important because with the eclipse coming up on the eighth, there's a lot of people saying, this is, this is it. Christ is coming down and we're going to be like calves in the stall. He's going to take care of us. And there's no, no need to worry about anything. We're going to be kind of swept off into this safe space for a little bit. And that's not what these scriptures are describing, in my opinion. What do you think? No, it's kind of like uh, it's the rapture doctrine that uh, <laughs> uh, people think that we're going to be okay and safe and protected. And no, I often think about this too a lot is that, you know, when um, C-19 came and uh, people got sick and, and, you know, some passed away and, and I was kind of wondering how people would, what was crossing in their minds is, is like, oh, is God judging us? Uh, oh, maybe that person was wicked and, oh, I didn't get COVID, so I'm righteous or something like mm -hmm. that. And But uh, no, I, I mean, it reminds me of a lot of movies where people are left behind. But uh, I think, for example, if, if that was the case where you are left behind and you're in a situation that it's a, you, you, big time trials are are happening like the wars that we see uh, uh, in other areas and other places. And you just can't imagine the things that they're going through. Like this earthquake too in Taiwan, it just happened. Sure. The big earthquake was huge. Oh yeah. And I just can't imagine earthquakes like that over here. It's like, I mean, obviously it's going to happen, but you know, the first thing in your mind, Oh, judgment, judgment, judgment. And it's, it's not always like that. It, I think, it's just that sometimes we have to go through them because number one, it's part of life. Uh, it, it may be a way to turn back to God uh, or say, for example, if there is like a war and you are there, perhaps God is using you to help others as well. So, I mean, it all depends uh, with your faith and, and how the way you um I don't know, think about it because I mean, you could be negative about it or you could be positive about it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you could be, this could be totally overwhelming and, and people get real, very fe fearful when they think about these things. So what are you doing in your personal life as, as we feel like we are getting closer to 
to greater tribulations, but also the coming of Jesus Christ. What are you doing in your life to better prepare for these things? Interesting question, because I was thinking about that today. I, uh, I have my, I was working, I just got off work uh -huh. a couple hours ago, um, at my part-time job and, and I was listening to the hymns and, uh, hymns always gives me peace. It, it, it gives me, it helps with my faith. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like the holy angels are around when I listen to hymns, I can listen to other music and and uh, feel the opposite of that. Yeah. But when I when I start feeling like kind of like worriness or something like that, I start listening to hymns. Mm -hmm. I've been praying more often. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've been repenting more than ever. Mm -hmm. Because I know I'm not perfect. I know that um, we are short and uh, we come out short. And I just, I always prayed asking for, uh, for strength, for faith, for, to help me, to guide me how to, I don't know, uh, protect my family. Right. Um, I've been uh, I told my wife just uh, earlier today or yesterday, I think it was, I said, you know, I'm going to Sam's Club tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. That mm -hmm. uh, we got we to gotta get more water and more food and, and just prepare, uh, prepare for uh, an earthquake because, uh, to be honest, that, that's what I think we're going to get. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. And, and so whether it's an earthquake or whatever it is, um, I, uh, been praying a lot and, um, been going to the temple more often too, because, um, I think I have to not only feel like I I'm, I'm, I'm following the commandments by doing what he wants me to do, but then also I, I need to feel that peace, that protection that, because if I don't, if I don't do what the Lord wants me to do and, and just do whatever I want to do, uh, it's not going to, it's not going to work out at, in the end, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just, and I'm, I'm doing all the same things you're describing. Um, all the same. I'm, I'm trying to uh, be a little bit more focused in my prayers and be more diligent in that. I'm trying to go to the temple a little bit more often. Um, I've always, tried to go at least once a month, but now I'm trying to go more than that if I can. And, um, it's, it's kind of, it's almost funny because the, the brethren, they say, well, don't go through any extreme measures, like get prepared, do what you need to do, but don't get extreme. And it's like, well, if you thought the government of the United States is going to be uh, just totally destroyed. <laughs> That's like an extreme event. <laughs> like you're going to do some extreme things to, to prepare for that. Like all of this, like if you thought, well, all the Gentile nations are going to be destroyed. That's, that's pretty extreme. You might do some extreme things to prepare for, and it might not seem extreme if that's what's going to happen because that's just reality, you know? So I don't know. It's, but I, I have been getting a little bit more, like I've always had, you know, a year's food supply, but I, I go down there and I look at it. And I'm like, eh, we could probably use a little more of this and that and try to get things a little bit better than they were. But also try not to, I try not to fear about what's going to happen. I just think whatever comes, comes and we'll have to deal with it when it does, but try to be in a mental state of like, you know, it's the Lord, it's all part of his plan and just trusting in it's going to happen the way he wants it to happen. And, um, I, I could do my part to try to prepare and that's what he wants me to do. Just like the Nephites would prepare when they saw trouble coming. Um, but more than that, it's, it's in God's hands, you know, and, and we just need to more important than anything is prepare spiritually. I think. I, I completely 100% believe that. I think um, spiritually is the number one preparedness that we need to do because, 
you know, it, it's it's hard to stay like, oh, you know, don't 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 be afraid. Uh, everything will be all right. And it's it's when we think about the calamities that are, that are probably waiting for for it to happen. And the brethren seem so calm about everything, and and but we're all like, oh my gosh, we we got to get this, we got to prepare for this. Oh my goodness, are, are we are, do we have everything done and and ready mm -hmm. and prepared? And and I often were like, why why do we act that way? Like we don't need to be like that. We we could, you know, um, we don't we don't want to sit back and wait for it to happen, right? We do have to prepare. Right. But, you know, I, I didn't President Nelson say that we're going to see miracles. Oh, sure. Things, we should be looking you know, for that, them. Yeah. Yeah. That we should be looking for them, that things are, are, are waiting to happen. You were like basically promising us that we're going to see things, obviously miracles. And I taken, I taken the approach, that approach that, uh, okay, I'm going, I'm going to believe him. I'm going right. to believe what he is saying and um, I'm not going to worry no more. Yeah. You know? And and the only fear that I have, honestly, is I don't want something bad to happen to me and leave my family. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. That That is, that is the only fear that I have because I know, I know that it's going to be hard for them. And, right. and that's, that's the only thing that I can't help to worry about uh -huh. and i don't know what to do to like stop thinking about that it's a it's a natural worry to have i think i think all yeah. all fathers have that have that same worry yeah i'll just read this last quote from heber c kimball and then maybe we'll call it a night it's, it's getting pretty late don't want it to okay. go on too long so it says oh, okay so this is from a general conference report from was it 1910 it says a spirit of speculation and extravagance will take possession of the saints and the results will be financial bondage an army of elders will be sent to the four quarters of the earth to search out the righteous and warn the wicked of coming events all kinds of religions will be started and miracles performed that will deceive the very elect if such a thing were possible persecution comes next and all Latter-day Saints will be tested to the limit. Many will apostatize, and others will stand still not knowing what to do. So I don't know if that persecution is more of a spiritual persecution or what. Before that day comes, however, the Saints will be put to the test that will try the very best of them. The pressure will become so great that the righteous among us will cry unto the Lord day and night until deliverance comes. It will be difficult to tell the face of a saint from the face of an enemy against the people of God. Then is the time to look out for the great sieve, for there will be a great sifting time, and many will fall. This church has before it many close places through which it will have to pass before the work of the Lord, or the work of God, is crowned with glory. The difficulties will be of such a character but the man or woman who does not possess a personal knowledge or witness will fall. If you have not got this testimony, you must live right and call upon the Lord and cease not until you obtain it. Remember these things. The time will come when no man or woman will be able to endure on borrowed light. Each will have to be guided by the light within themselves. If you do not have the knowledge that Jesus is the Christ, how can you stand? Here's a, I have a question though. My question is, what does he mean by that when he says that the difficulties will be such a character that was it that the man or woman who does not possess a personal knowledge or witness will fall? What mm -hmm. is I mean it knowledge of what to me when i when i read that it's like okay so what you're saying is that a personal knowledge a testimony of the church of the doctrine because why is it so important for us to have that testimony for ourselves now we all could believe in i'm, I'm, I'm i could most most of us believe 
okay, so you're 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 a member of the church. Of course, you're going to believe in God. You're going to believe in the Bible. But then it says this, and I'm thinking, okay, is it going to be something that's going to happen where like you're going to question? if the church is true or not or what, because that's what I, this is what I'm reading. Right. Yeah. It could be, it could be personal knowledge of Jesus Christ, or it could be a personal knowledge of a living prophet because um, one of the things that will protect us is if we follow the prophet, that's very clear. And I'll go through that maybe in my next presentation that we need to become a Zion people. And part of that is following the prophet and being one with each other. So I think it could be either a testimony of Christ or a testimony that we have a living prophet on the earth right now. So I don't know what the I, prophet might ask us to do. And we'll know, I to, think you're right on that. Yeah. Think about it because look at what um, these recent, recent years, because of, of what happened with C-19, a lot of people left. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, Interesting. And we received a lot of a lot of direction, tons of direction about exactly what we're going through today, about how we need to have the spirit with us and we have to let God prevail and we have to think celestial and all this counsel to help us get ready for these times if we're not following. So it might not be all right, righteous members, we're heading out to this place for safety. Come with us because that's not going to separate the wheat from the tares. There's going to be tares. Just like they go to church every week with their living their double life, they'll go off to wherever their family's going to. There has to be a more of a separation than that, I think. And so to me, it's could be more like exactly what we're seeing now. Follow the prophet. Is he's telling us to go to the temple more often. He's telling us to look for miracles. He's telling us to do to repent daily, you know, all these things. And if we're not following the prophet, that could be what this is talking about. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. So anyway, any final thoughts? So what are you doing to prepare for this eclipse? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see it. I think, I think it is a sign of, of uh, hard times to come. I think the rest of 2024 will be very difficult and going forward will be very difficult. Um, I don't think it's meaning anything more than that, but um, I'm just, it's a, it's a historic event. I'm excited to be a part of it, but um, I think I just kind of say, stay the course and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Do you think it'll be more difficult worldwide or specifically um, United States? Oh, United States. Yeah, 100%. I mean, oh, the whole world for sure, but this is a sign for the United States, in my opinion. Yeah, cool. things are, we're on a knife's edge right now with things politically and financially and all the ways that I discussed in my last video of the natural consequences of the wrath of God. Um, we are on a knife's edge right now. Things could are just ready to fall at any moment. Yeah, I do. I mean, I think you're right. We just got to be faithful, faithful, and and and, and believe, and and just be careful of of what we who we follow. Right. You know, and and, and the messages that we we are listening to. That's right. Yeah, I have to be very careful in these last days. Yeah, I really, you know, I was watching a documentary the uh, couple days ago on, you know, an another crazy story about uh, mem uh, family. Who was it? Jo who was, what was her name? I forget, but she, uh, I guess she kind of went cuckoo she was a member of the church and she kind of she had a she was a youtube sensation oh yeah with her kids yeah 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 i did not know about that story yeah and and i and i started thinking man you know what this only happens to you only hear stories like that from our church like what's going on and i said to myself i said to myself you know it's the devil 
Mm -hmm. he's really he wants to get you like i mean he he'll do anything to destroy the image well and and the church cast a wide net we get all kinds in the church at all different levels of of leadership as well and all that's going to get sorted out yeah definitely well marco thank you for joining me i appreciate you being on here and we should do this again sometime yeah, I appreciate it. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, um, yeah, let's do it again some other time, and we'll prepare for. Uh, I maybe maybe I should host the next time. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds great. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Bye bye.